Hey everyone, Brandon and Kyle here at the Kabuki Strength Lab, and today we are going to talk about a semi-highly controversial point, and that is why speed work doesn't work for power lifters. Now, despite the name power lifter, power is not that important for a power lifter to have, and we're going to define that and break it down a little bit. So when we talk speed work, we're really going to be talking about uh, one or two very specific things because uh, there's many different ways to change this conversation depending on uh, different implements that you add to bars such as bands change if, if you change the distance of range of motion of a bar that might change the, this discussion a little bit as well but we're going to make this fairly simple and fairly direct at a couple different uh, examples one of those being jumping to squatting does that actually carry over to squatting and the next one would be let's say speed bench pressing or submaximal bench pressing for very very high velocities does that transfer over to your heavy one rep max squat and we're going to try to find a middle ground here now this isn't uh, an opinion piece by us this is simply breaking down the physics of both of those different profiles of movement so that we can have a common language between these things we find that when we try to start these types of conversations people have very highly tell held belief systems around exercise efficacy. Sometimes it's based on things they read from popular strength coaches. Sometimes it's based off of individual experiences that they've had. In either situation, that's okay. But we do need to have some common ground and means to start a conversation and a dialogue between these things. So uh, we're gonna talk about does moving fast equal uh, moving faster at heavier weights, I suppose. Sure. I wanna define two uh, things for you guys to set a foundation for this discussion. The first of which is going to be impulse. Impulse is going to be the amount of force that you create over unit of time. If I push this table, I have now created force into this table to change the direction or the uh, to, to create movement on that uh, object. The next thing that we're going to cover is uh, momentum. Now momentum is going to be the quantity of change of motion of an object. Now momentum is influenced by a couple things. It's influenced by the total mass of an object and it's influenced by the velocity at which that object is moving. So a really good example to understand uh, momentum is in a uh, truck rolling down a hill. We will assume that this gradient of a hill is consistent. As the truck goes down the hill, momentum will be increased if the truck has a heavier load. Uh, now, we might uh, think of that as like a squat. If a squat is heavier, moved at the same velocity, it will have greater momentum and thus travel potentially a little bit smoother through the total range of motion. Now, with this example, if we change this slope, however, momentum is drastically changed because we've changed now the velocity of that. If we say, for example, at the end of this hill is another uh, hill in the opposite direction, we have to apply more velocity to this or force to it in order for that truck to continue moving up in this direction. So in this example, speed is consistent, then the momentum is going to improve if the mass uh, improves of that load. So let's bring this back a little bit. When we look at the impulse profile of a, uh, let's say a squat, a squat is going to take anywhere from two maybe to five seconds to complete. That's a vast generality, but that's going to be your max effort movements and uh, it kind of depends on, well, it depends on a lot of factors as to it, how fast that moves. But for a good strength athlete, a well-conditioned power lifter who can grind against weights, those lifters are going to move squats fairly slow and they're going to be able to hang out in that, uh, or they're going to have a large degree of skill for grinding. Now, if we look at the impulse profile of a squat, it's going to look like something like this. There's a fairly large amount of force being produced, but it's on a fairly large scale of time. Now, if we look at something like a jump, because oftentimes when people do speed work, they will jump for their squats or they will do uh, submaximal speed squats and try and move really fast. And the common argument there is that it's going to make me more explosive or it's going to help me carry myself through my sticking point. And uh, what that looks like when we graph the impulse profile of a jump or a speed squat is something like this. Now there is a significant amount of more force created, especially in a jump, as it compares to a max effort 
squat. However, that doesn't mean that the amount of force created at this apex is going to transfer over to a longer length of time, and that's the key. Because it takes us longer to complete a squat, the impulse profile is completely different. And in order to have uh, a, a significant movement carryover, we've defined that by a couple things. Movement carryover is going to be within similar force vectors or directions, and we're going to have similar impulse profiles because this amount of force is not necessarily going to create so much momentum to carry us through this range of motion. It's much more important for us to match our impulse profiles of our exercise selection if we want to maximize carryover. So there's not necessarily a, um, there are potentially a few reasons why we might want to do speed work. One of which is to instill a little bit more intent behind our lifters. Uh, one of which maybe to refine some mechanical improvements, technical maybe, issues. maybe technique issues, but you could also make a case for slowing down to improve technique. In either case, moving fast in your movements isn't necessarily going to allow you to create or generate more force over a unit of time. And that's the key when we're talking about sport carryover, specifically in the context of powerlifting. We want to choose exercise variations predominantly that have a longer unit of time where force is generated over that unit of time longer if we want to have sufficient carryover. Does that make sense, Kyle? Yeah, 100%. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Uh, we might uh, bring back a few other fitness, physics type discussions. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Brandon and Kyle out.